All right, guys, real quick, I want to give you a down and dirty of how I manually clean intake valves on the Ford EcoBoost engines and, of course, their GDI engines. Both the same uh, concern, same design, same problem. They're both direct injected, so there's no port fuel injection coming through the intake onto the backside of the intake valves, washing them off and keeping them clean. There's nothing there. Plus, on the EcoBoost engines, there's a lot of carryover. Uh, the, there's a lot of EGR coming through on some engines. And then, of course, the PCV system all comes together, coats the backside of the valves. They're nice and hot. And guess what? It just bakes on the backside there. It can cause lots of drivability issues. The main one being misfires, especially when the engine's cold. So the first thing, of course, you have to do is, of course, pull the intake off so we have access to the intake runners in the head. Then you're gonna take a look at the, each one of the ports on here. So I'm gonna try to show you how bad these can get. This vehicle has about 87,000 miles on it. I'll try to get you focused down in here. So you can see cylinder one right here is pretty bad. This is the second port for cylinder one. It's pretty bad. Cylinder two. There's a lot of buildup on that stem right there. Three, it's pretty dry. But the next port over, there's a lot of buildup in the stem there. And then number four here was really bad, uh, but I just got finished. I just finished uh, cleaning it. So I just, this is after maybe one, two cleanings, manual cleanings of the valve on here. Uh, I cleaned the stem off on there. And of course, uh, the valve, the backside of the valve itself. And you can see it's much smoother and the airflow can come through into the cylinder the way it was designed. That's where the misfire occurs. It disrupts the airflow when you start getting these large mushrooms all over the darn things. All right, it can get quite built up on there. It doesn't take much to actually cause an issue and a misfire. All right, so like I said, of course, the first thing you want to do is pull the intake off there. And then I take an air wand and I'll get down inside of there and clean each one of these ports out. Okay, and then you can start the process on there. What you're looking for on there is for both the valves to be close. So a lot of times I've noticed on these, one's gonna be open, like number one cylinder on here is, is partially open. It's very obvious they're open. Uh, whereas the rest of them, you look down in them with a good flashlight and you can see they're all closed, all right? Uh, so you wanna make sure the cylinder that you're working on, the valves are closed. So none of the solvent or the chunks of carbon get down into the uh, combustion chamber, okay? So you can look, let me see if I can show you on this one, on cylinder one here. Yeah, you can kind of see it, but this one's definitely open. Uh, whereas you can see the rest of these, it's obviously closed, you see? So once you find a cylinder that's closed, you're gonna go ahead and start cleaning it on there. Now, what I use are, are, are long picks, wire brushes, I even use a long flathead screwdriver like this. And basically you get down in there and you just start working around and getting those big chunks off of there. You wanna have a good flashlight down in there so you can see exactly what you're doing. You clean the stem and the backside of the valve on there, okay? Get as much as you can off, okay? Looks good, lots of chunks down in there. Use your air wand, blow it out really good inside of there, and then go back in and clean some more over and over again. Now, once all the big chunks are out of there, you wanna start using a solvent. Solvents is last, okay? You wanna get all this out of there before, and then we'll just clean the backside of the valve and the intake runner with carb cleaner, which is strong enough. Get it down in there. Remember, the valve is closed already, so it's sealed off. So you can spray enough down in there to coat, that, coat the backside of the valve and pull it up a little bit and just let it sit so it can break down that carbon on there. While it's breaking it down, that's when you get to bust the brush out. Now, the brush that I use is like this. It's straight, but then the tip here, like most brushes, it angles off. What's nice about that is you get down inside of here and... When it's going down into that runner there, it's curving out to go around the, the side of the valve there. So you can get in there and really work it. You know, it's impossible to get down in there and show you this, but that's what's happening down inside of there. And again, you just keep going with the solvent and your air wand over and over and over again, attack all the cylinders that are currently closed, like these three are closed right now. I'm gonna attack them all. And then after that, I need to turn the engine over manually uh, via the crankshaft down here. So you can see the, the, 
the uh, crankshaft bolt right there, all the way down there. You simply turn it clockwise, clockwise only, and you turn it and you sit here and you watch the valves on the cylinder that you're trying to close. Once both of them close on there, I have major focus issues here today. I'm working on a focus, having focus problems, geez. <laughs> Once you turn over the engine enough to have both the valves in your next cylinder close off, you stop, you work on that cylinder, okay? Then at the end, before you start putting that intake back on and everything, really get in there with the light, a good light, look around inside to make sure all the chunks of carbon are out of there and use the heck out of your long reach air wand. You do not want anything falling down into the cylinder uh, after you get done cleaning it like this. Now on this vehicle, I'm also changing spark plugs out. So while the spark plugs are out and I'm done cleaning it just in case any of the uh, solvent got past the valves or any kind of chunks got down there somehow, I will stick the air wand down into the cylinder, then inject air and it'll blow everything out, all right? Of course, make sure like I have the, any kind of intake runners or intake uh, uh, ports on here closed off on the intake tube here. So make sure we're not introducing any debris into the engine. Now in this vehicle also, uh, this is a little more advanced. I am going to go in and remove the high pressure fuel rail here and actually pull them off and clean the tips of the uh, direct injectors, okay? Uh, because the tips are down in the combustion chamber where all that carbon is at inside of there. So I'll clean those off and reseal them up and put them back on. That's a drastic uh, repair, I would say. 90 some percent of the time, you just need to get in here and take care of these intake valves. And you can see after, oh, I don't know, five minutes of work, like a focus here, uh, these can look pretty darn good. Not so bad. All right. Do a second cleaning with the solvent and it'll look like new. All right. So I'm going to get back to it. Now on this vehicle, I'm also, just because I had the, uh, the tool, the induction tool, and I have the chemicals, I'm going to do a GDI intake induction service on here. BG says this is uh, safe to be used in the Ford EcoBoost engines. That's the engines they've been testing on since day one, and everything's okay, and it's turbo safe uh, using the BG kit here. And there's actually a new kit out that's even stronger for severe situations like this where there's an actual drivability concern um, where you can use the induction service without removing the intake, and it's supposed to clean off all that gunk that we're cleaning off manually. Now, the reason why you can't just use uh, an induction service like this or that CRC uh, turbo cleaner, GDI cleaner, is because all these carbon deposits, they're all, all this oil and everything that's coming through, they're hitting the backside of that valve and it's super hot. They're being cooled by the port fuel injection, okay? So when it hits it, it bakes on, it bakes on hard. So some of it's gonna be oily, but most of it's gonna be really, really hard carbon deposits. And regular, uh, you know, uh, induction services and all that stuff, they kind of air, they, they atomize and they go through, they will not take care of it. So this one right here is for maintenance, but we're already cleaning it manually and we're just cleaning it again, the intake ports, it'll clean the combustion chamber and everything on top of that. But any kind of induction service besides the new BG induction service, which is called something totally different, much more aggressive, nothing else can actually remove these hard deposits besides a walnut blasting or manual cleaning or the new stuff from BG. So keep that in mind. So if you don't want to go to that expense with the BG stuff, what you need to do is get in here and do it manually, all right? And be done with it and get it done. You know, every 60 to 100,000 miles, um, it depends when, whenever you start having drivability concerns is when you're gonna to need to actually do this service on here. On my Ford Explorer, the, my, my 2012, when I first bought it, it was starting to have these issues, same thing, 2.0 Eco, um, at around 23,000 miles. So it can happen at any kind of mileage. Mm -hmm. 